So just a very, very quick show of hands. Who has already heard of the term locus of control? And what's uh, anyone brave enough to just quickly shout out what your understanding of it is? It's your understanding as to where the control of the situation comes from within you or from external forces. Boom. Nailed it. And, yeah, why not? Give the man a round of applause. He's just saved me doing the rest of the talk. <laughs> okay, good. And uh, luckily, I'm going to go into slightly more detail. And if anybody else is feeling brave, can you think of an instance that you've really loved taking control or, or felt in control within a game? Or, or having taken it away from you? Even if it's just the name of a game or like a quick example. Anybody? Yeah, go ahead, dude. Um, getting a perfect, uh, or doing a perfect encounter in uh, DMC. Nice. And so what was the aspect of control for you for that? Was it like the, uh, the precision of the controls? Was it like the way the game reacted? How did it, how did it kind of make you feel? A combination of everything, but the fact that you just go, I have out and out beaten the challenge that was set to me. And the only reason is, uh, that I've beaten that is because of things that I've done. Excellent. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. And that's what, personally anyway, like the best games do, is they give you that feeling. So um, the first time I came into, into contact with the concept of the locus of control, not to be confused with the locust of control. Um, sorry if I gave you a tongue twister there, Jake, earlier. But um, actually, it was whilst I was working at the Apple Store. And all credit to the Apple Store. Um, they give surprisingly robust psychological training to a bunch of people who are essentially just taking stickers off iPhones and teaching people how to soft reset. But um, they taught me all about the locus of control while I was there. And, and like I said, it's kind of helped me through, through life immensely. And I'll just leave that up while I read a little something that someone, I don't know who, much wiser than me on Wikipedia wrote about it. So, in personality psychology, Locus of control refers to the extent to which individuals believe they can control events affecting them. That guy knows it. Understanding of the concept was developed by a guy called Julian B. Rotter in 1954 and has since become an aspect of personality studies. A person's locus, which is Latin for place or location, is conceptualized as either internal, so the person believes they can control their life, or external, meaning they believe the decisions uh, that they make and, and life in general is more down to fate or more down to circumstances outside of their control. Uh, they cannot influence them, essentially. Individuals with a strong internal locus of control, hence my little graph, believe events in their life derive primarily from their own actions. For example, when receiving test results, people with an internal locus of control tend to praise or blame themselves and their abilities, or when faced with DMC challenges. People with a strong external locus tend to praise or blame external factors, such as the teacher, or to test. Um, at this stage, I really hope you don't think I'm some kind of crazy control freak. Uh, I'm, I'm not at all. Like I say, I practice giving it away as well as taking it. Um, I like to think of myself more as a control geek. I'm really interested in it, finding it out, even trying to hack it and, and change mine over a course of time. So I'm not saying it's hard to understand, but let's just take a moment to illustrate it and con contextualize it within a game. Any Hearthstone fans in the house? Yeah, I thought maybe there'd be a couple. Does this slide bring about any strong feelings in you, one way or the other? Hey. <laughs> I think that's a fair comment. <laughs> so, you're playing a game of Hearthstone, and for anybody that hasn't played it, I'm sure you've seen gameplay, it's pretty straightforward. You make a deck, it's a you know, CGC kind of style thing, very fast paced. And Murlocs, these little guys, uh, it's like a rush deck. Basically, so you're playing a game of Hearthstone, and you know you've spent ages kind of crafting all the right stuff, thinking of all the synergy be between the cards, like perfecting your meta game, all of that bullshit that doesn't really matter in Hearthstone. And you come up against these guys, and they crush you. They just flatten you. Okay, so you're probably going to have one of two reactions to that. The game's over in like three turns. If you have a very strong internal locus of control, you're probably going to say to yourself. Oh, you know, fair play to the other guy, like, the Murlocs work well together. I could have maybe made some better judgments. I could have made a better deck somehow. I should have prepared for a Murloc rush deck. Um, and, and, you know, you kind of dust yourself off and you try again. You go and cross some new cards or you build an identical Murloc deck to get revenge on someone, that kind of thing. 
If you have a strongly external locus of control, you might have guessed by now, you're probably going to feel pretty frustrated, like things are totally outside of your control. The guy got the luck of the draw, or the girl, and you know you got the crap cards. There was just nothing you could do about it. It's all over in a heartbeat, and you're just left to wallow in the ignominy of being crushed by a bunch of what are essentially kind of angry frog fish things. I don't even know what they are. Um, you might be able to guess which one I more closely identify with. But there's kind of two uh, quick illustrations. If we compare that to another game, say the Souls series, so Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and uh, Bloodborne, which is going to come out. Any fans of those games in the house? Cool. And, and just again, quickly, like, why do you guys like those games so much? Because I'm a sadist. Yeah? OK. That's cool. We'll find you a nice uh, masochist somewhere else in the house, and you can, you can link up. Anybody else? It's again, because every time you screw up, except for a few bosses, it's completely your fault. And it's up to you to get better and keep going. There's no real sense of, ah, oh, I couldn't do anything about it. It's always, ah, oh, I screwed up. Exactly. Took the words right out of my mouth. And that's why, in a weird way, that I think the Souls games are actually much more forgiving and much more fair than Hearthstone. Um, I rage quit Hearthstone after about a month because uh, it didn't fit with my locus of control and I've never been able to go back, but constantly addicted to Dark Souls. And um, I've actually written kind of most of this out in, in much greater detail where I cite some of the sources and the kind of more in-depth psychology. Uh, I think Jake will probably publish it somewhere when I'm, when I'm done typing it up. So I'm just going to kind of try and whiz through. But Let's just say there is an ideal, okay? There is a perfect point. Obviously, everybody in the room's got to have uh, a different locus, and whether you're aware of it or not, but it's one of these cool things where there is actually like a right way to do it, and it's called bilocalism. And I'm not going to bother reading out the slides. Uh, you, can, you can figure this out for yourself. But I think it's pretty cool um, that this is like a very achievable ideal. And, you know, how do you achieve it? How do you essentially make your entire life better by your understanding of what you have control over? Well, it's practice. And I think games are amazing practice for this. I've read a lot about the subject and studied psychology a bit and stuff like that, but honestly, and not just because I'm a gamer, but I don't think anywhere there is a more nuanced example of the kind of complexity of our relationship with control and the effect control has of our lives. So, yeah, it's definitely achievable. And... First easy step, you just got to figure out where your locus lies, right? There's a whole bunch of tests you can do online that's super straightforward. You just ask yourself a couple of hard questions, like, do you often repeat the same thing, um, expecting a different result? Do you get stressed when something happens, and you know, you, yeah, you feel out of control? Um, or on the other end of the spectrum, uh, if you have an incredibly strong internal locus, but you don't have, you're not productive, say, or you're not very confident, then that's the kind of thing that can often lead to depression. On the other end of the spectrum, going back to external, you know, if you constantly feel like everything's outside of your control, that can lead to great apathy and, and feelings of hopelessness. So it's like kind of a serious business, but if you can figure it out, you can start to hack it. And like I say, games, as long as you're kind of aware of the, the tips and the tricks that some of them use, and you make sure to avoid some of the worst ones, you can definitely hack it. And, you know, so like I say, I'm a writer. And for many years, as you can imagine, some of you are also probably writers. And, uh, and if you are, I really hope to speak to you later and we can kind of like wallow together. Um, I felt very, very out of control like with my life. I mean, you know, how do you get started as a writer, right? And you look at other writers and you just think, ah, oh, they must just have got a lucky break somehow. They got all the luck, like uh, who knows? And, um, and yeah, kind of putting this into practice, especially indie games just kind of knowing that one or two people worked on this, they just hacked it together, they put it out there, they kind of took back that control, whilst also giving you, the player, some, I found that really inspiring. So um, I'm going to quote one more person who also probably says a lot of this better than me. Does anybody recognize his face? This is uh, my, probably my favorite, or at least the writer around kind of video game culture that's been most influential on me. Her name is Jane McGonagall. She's a game designer, psychologist, uh, fitness guru. She's a bit of everything. She's amazing. And I will never, ever stop recommending her book, Reality is Broken, to everybody. 
really, really cool. And this is just a quick excerpt from her website, which kind of sums up the book and why she's in here. So, drawing on positive psychology, cognitive science, and sociology, Reality is Broken uncovers how game designers have hit on core truths about what makes us happy and utilized these discoveries to astonishing effect in virtual environments. But why, McGonagall asks, should we use the power of games for escapist entertainment alone? In Reality is Broken, she reveals how these new alternate reality games, or any game really, are already improving the quality of our daily lives, fighting social problems such as depression and obesity, and addressing vital 21st century challenges, and she forecasts the thrilling possibilities that lie ahead. And the subtext to that, and what she also says in the book, is basically, if you're not a gamer, you're fucked. So, which is kind of reassuring, and the geeks have won at last. And, you know, at the risk of being a bit melodramatic, like, if you look at our Western culture of just wanton consumerism and, like, the prevalence the media has, you can start to understand that maybe there's, like, a societal-wide problem of control and an endemic lack of it as we're kind of pulled hither and thither by, like, marketing and, and all this shit I've had to do for my day job. Um, and this, that, and the other, and you know, it's, yeah, it's a big deal. Now, um, how am I doing for time, Jake? Pretty badly. Pretty badly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. In that case, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give you one more quote, and I'm going to skip over three paragraphs on the philosophy of controllers. You can read about it in the essay. And um, I'll say one more thing, one more thing before the quote, which is, the illusion of control. This is what you've got to watch out for. And this is what games like Candy Crush and um, Kingdom, Kingdoms of Amala, if anyone's played that, and also Fable, I think, are really, really guilty of. Basically, giving you these arbitrary rewards and, and kind of automatically assigning like level up points. All of these things that actually don't influence your agency within the game. You know, how the game works, your impact on the gameplay. It's just this kind of, it's like a tyranny of choice. Um, again, you know, the mini-maps fill up on things like Far Cry. And choice and control are very closely linked. Again, I'm not going to have time to go into that right now, but I'm sure a couple of the other talks tonight will, will touch on choice and morality and things like that. So one quick quote, and then I'll wrap up. And this is from Ash Denton, who is one of the co-founders of a company called Explosive Allen, working on a really, really great game, uh, a great-looking game called Capital at the moment. And I asked him, what it meant to him, and he said, control to me means ownership of the experience, command over how things unfold. Without it, immersion is lost. And yeah, I agree with him. And again, I'll skip over things. Control versus choice, you get the idea. I just wanted to very, very quickly show you a screenshot from uh, the game that I'm writing and seriously briefly sum up why control is gonna be so important to this game. Basically, it's going to be a cyberpunk uh, RPG, very much in this style. And, you know, as a writer, I have this responsibility to kind of play with people's minds. Basically, I want you to feel like you have uh, macro control. So, a little bit of control over things happening very near to you, the kind of moral choices and, and the thing in your little bubble, but feel out of control in the micro. So, the whole world, the whole city is kind of way more in control than you are. And I want to try and uh, kind of find that fine line. Okay, I think that will do to sum it up. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Really hope to be able to chat to you, uh, some of you, all of you, a little bit later. And can't wait to hear the rest of the talks. And thanks.